Okay, students, we're going to go on to section four of our antibiotic lecture. So let me share my screen. And what we're going to talk about now are some common side effects of antibiotics. Those annoying side effects that you can have just because you take antibiotics. Um, most antibiotics are known to cause some common side effects such as nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. And they just do. Blah. Blah. Now, not infectious diarrhea, but a looser stool, you know, and it's just because antibiotics kill bacteria, but they can also kind of damage your own good bacteria in your system, which could, and you have a lot of good bacteria that live in your GI tract. So if you've got some of it killed too, the good bacteria, then you can get sick to your stomach or you can have some loose stools. Okay, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. And oftentimes people think that these side effects are allergic reactions to antibiotics, but they are not allergic reactions. They are side effects. True allergic reactions are itchy rash, um, itchy hives, edema, stuff like that. So if a client displays signs and symptoms of an allergy to an antibiotic after taking it, notify the provider. He will discontinue it. He will prescribe something else and he will prescribe diphenhydramine, a.k.a. Benadryl, which is an antihistamine, which will decrease the allergic signs and symptoms. Okay, so nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea is not an allergic reaction. It's a side effect. Okay, and the doctor won't stop them. The antibiotics is because you feel sick to your stomach. Okay, all right. So pay attention here. If a client, here's some hives and the medical name for hives is urticaria and they are very itchy called pruritus. Now that's an al allergy. So the client is displaying red elevated itchy rash after taking antibiotic. Uh, now that is an allergy. Um, so we would have to stop the antibiotic and notify the provider. But that's an uh, that's not a life threatening allergy. It's not anaphylaxis or anaphylactic shock. That's a life threatening allergic reaction, where and it usually gets so bad that the lips swell up, the throat feels tight, you've got difficulty breathing, and you feel faint and weak. Um, that's anaphylaxis, and that's an emergency, and we would have to administer an EpiPen and call 911 for that particular type of life-threatening allergic reaction. So a regular allergic reaction, probably some diphenhydramine, which is Benadryl. Uh, but if you have an anaphylaxis reaction, an EpiPen, call, call 911. Okay. All right, keep going. Pay attention here. A side effect that could happen when taking antibiotics is called a super infection or a secondary infection. Call it what you want. It means the same thing. And let me explain. And we don't want it, but it could happen. If a client takes antibiotics, so I'm going antibiotics for a long period of time, maybe a month, two months then a super infection or a secondary infection can occur, which means you're going to get another infection on top of the infection that you had. And what is happening is that if you're on antibiotics for a long length of time, it was killing the pathogenic bacteria, which was good because that's why you got on it but it also killed your good bacteria called probiotics, which we didn't want it to do, but it did anyway. So it killed the good stuff in there called probiotics that help your body actually fight off infections. So with your good bacteria gone, then other infections can grow, like a yeast infection or a fungal infection can grow. 
or you can get a C. diff infection. And those are a super infection or a secondary infection. Another infection you got because you were on antibiotics and for a long period of time and your good bacteria was killed and other things can grow. So let's explain a little bit more about that then. Here's a super infection or secondary infection, and we're going to call it oral candidiasis. So oral meaning the mouth. So candidiasis is the same thing as a yeast or a fungal infection. Some people call this thrush. Okay, I don't care what you call it, but it's yeast or fungus growing in there. And it's thick and white and sticky and practically has to be scraped off. Okay, and it'd be growing on your tongue or the roof of the mouth or whatever. And the medical name for it is candidiasis. And a student told me, here's how I'm going to remember candidiasis. I'm going to think about creamy candy. Like some candy is very creamy. Creamy candy. Candidiasis like a Cadbury cream egg uh, uh, that you got get on Easter from the Easter Bunny. Uh, candy, candidiasis, that's a yeast infection. And the first thing I think of is if someone stuck out their tongue and showed me, I would have to say, are you on antibiotics? And if they said yes, then you've got this secondary infection and I'm not going to stop the antibiotic. I'll call the provider. I'll S bar this, but you're going to need an antifungal medicine to clear up this fungus or this candy deasis or this yeast. Okay. So, okay. You can get it in your mouth, but you can also get it in your vagina. And men can get it down in their private area too. So um, a super infection, secondary infection, vaginal candidiasis, a yeast or fungal infection in the vagina. And if it was growing up in here, then this is what it would look like. If the doctor looked up in there, look at all that creamy candy. <laughs> um, and that's very itchy, very painful. And you could reach up there and literally scratch it off on your finger. Um, the two positions that I would, the doctor might want to put the patient in is to look for the vaginal candidiasis is a lithotomy, which means on the back with the feet in the stirrups or dorsal recumbent, which means on the back with the feet on the bed and the knees in the air, knees bent, uh, feet on the bed. And we will continue your antibiotic, but we'll give you an antifungal medicine to clear up this candidiasis, okay? Secondary or super infection, okay? Now, another super infection you can get is a C. diff infection, Clostridium difficile. And I want to explain this to you. Very, very important you understand these next several slides. C. diff is a pathogenic bacteria, so it's bad. It lives in our GI tract, okay? And I expect it to live there. And it usually does not cause us problems because our good bacteria outnumber it and keep an eye on it. So here's your C. diff. And C. diff is um, tricky in the fact that it has a protective coating around it called a spore. So I'll go here and I'll make, I'll say that this is a spore and we're going to call a spore like a bulletproof vest, if you will. So if a cop was wearing a bulletproof vest on his chest, then a bullet would not be able to get through it. Well, the thing that I want you to remember is when a medicine, when an antibiotic has a spore, not wait, when a pathogenic bacteria has a spore, the bulletproof vest, and I'm trying to give you an antibiotic. The antibiotic is like the bullet, and it's the one that wants to try to get through here, but it can't get through because of the spore. So what I'm trying to say there is this spore makes this bacteria resistant to a lot of antibiotics. 
So you've got the protective spore around it. And you had all these antibiotic number one, antibiotic number two, antibiotic number three, antibiotic number four. None of them can get through it because it can't get through the spore. So it's very resistant. And that's what I, I want you to remember that about C. diff. And that's why Clostridium difficile, if you look at the word difficile, is very difficult to treat because it itself is resistant to a lot of antibiotics. Now, it doesn't cause us problems because our good bacteria outnumber it. However, if you are on antibiotics, antibiotics destroy the bad bacteria and the good bacteria living in your gut. But the antibiotic probably didn't destroy C. diff because of the spore, but it got rid of your good bacteria. Now with the good bacteria out of the way, this is going to give us a ton of problems. Now, hopefully that makes sense to you. And if it doesn't, you can ask for clarification. You can read about it. You can go online. You can Google it. You can YouTube videos about C. diff. Okay. All right. So um, a person was on antibiotics for a period of time, as we've already said, and the good bacteria would be killed and the resistant C. diff would begin to grow in the intestines. And let me make a note here. Okay. And then the client will develop the C. diff colitis, which is a super infection or a secondary infection. And what's going to happen, you can see the word colitis. Here's your colon right here. It's going to get inflamed and the patient is going to experience excessive, watery, foul-smelling, mucousy, explosive, infectious diarrhea that's very contagious and easily spread. And if you're having, so I'll go here and go here, and all of this infectious diarrhea coming out that's full of C. diff, then that can be spread easily to other people. And you might say, well, I thought we all had C. diff in us to begin with. And we do. We all have it in our GI tract. But I certainly don't want any more in me. Okay. Because if I put more in me, then it might overwhelm my good bacteria. And then I get C. diff infection too. So you, what you have to remember about C. diff. And I'll put it over here on the side and hopefully you can see it. C. diff is anywhere in that room, anywhere in the room where the patient is, anywhere where he's touched or not. So it is, that's how easy it is to spread. So yes, it's in the stool, but yes, it's on the toilet seat. Yes, it's on the water faucet. Yes, it's on the paper towel holder. Yes, it's on his water glass. Yes, it's on his gown. Yes, it's on the side rails. Yes, it's on his sheets. Okay. So when you walk into the room, you have to apply PPE of gown and gloves outside the patient's room before you even go in. Um, because you don't want to pick up that C. diff with your hands or leaning over and getting it on your uniform. Hand sanitizer does not kill C. diff. You must wash your hands with soap and water. Okay. And then a student had a question on NCLEX about this. And it stated something like a nurse instructs family regarding a client with a C. diff infection which statement by the family requires further education by the nurse. And if it said, we will wash our hands with hand, clean our hands with hand sanitizer, that is not true. You would have to wash it with soap and water. Okay. So C. diff, a super infection that can occur because it's so resistant. And many antibiotics don't kill it, but many antibiotics kill your good bacteria. And then the C. diff goes unopposed and can cause the C. diff colitis, okay? Very infectious disease. 
So when taking care of a client with a C. diff infection, um, the C. diff can be anywhere in the room and the client will be in what we call contact isolation. Because that means that I could come into contact with that C. diff by touching the patient or anything that he has touched in the room. So I can touch the client directly or touching items indirectly. So I'm going to make a note here. And that's why it's very highly contagious. The PPE are gloves and gown. Okay. So uh, we're going to put the PPE on before entering the room. And here's what's on the door right here. Stop. Contact precautions. Ask the nursing staff. So clean hands before entering and then when leaving the room and gown and glove at the door. Okay, so put on the gown and the glove before gloves before going in the room. Take the PP off before exiting the room. You do not need a mask because you don't breathe in C. diff. But if you anticipate that the C. diff might splash you in the face because it's explosive diarrhea, then I would cover my nose and mouth and my eyes. So, but uh, anyway... And if you walk in and see diff is all over the floor, well, then you better apply shoe covers. But the before going in, it's gloves and gown. And then uh, wash your hands with soap and water, no hand sanitizer. Then right here, right here, use patient dedicated or disposable equipment. Do not take your stethoscope in there and touch that patient with your stethoscope because then you're going to walk out of the room and C. diff will be on your stethoscope and you'll go into another patient's room and spread C. diff to them. That's why they usually have the cheap disposable stethoscopes in there for patients with C. diff infections and it stays in the room and then when the patient is discharged, we throw it away. If you have to take your own equipment in there, if, if, if you had to, then you're going to have to be meticulous and clean it very, very well um, before you get out of that room. So hopefully that makes sense to you right there. Okay. All right. Keep going. Here are some of the most popular antibiotics used to treat C. diff infections. And they are vancomycin and metronidazole. And those are able to get through the spore. So if a patient had a C. diff infection, we're probably going to be put you on this or this to help kill that C. diff. And that was on boards for former students. Student had that on boards. And yes, you're going to have to remember this. It is on the test. And students will say to me, they'll put their hand up and they'll flag me over and they'll say, I don't remember this being on the PowerPoint. And I'll say, yeah, it was on the PowerPoint and it had its own slide. So there's no reason you can't remember vancomycin and metronidazole as two very common antibiotics that will effectively get through the spore and kill the C. diff. Yes, you're going to have to know it. Okay. All right. Keep going. Let's see, where are we? Oh, uh, okay. Some antibiotics that we said before are very potent. That means they're very strong and they're used for difficult to treat or potentially life-threatening infections. Okay. If you had strep throat, I am not going to give you a very, very strong antibiotic. I'll give you an antibiotic strong enough to kill the strep, but I don't need to bring out the big guns. I'll bring out the big guns like him when I'm ready to fight something big, but they are so potent that they could hurt the client if the dose is too high. So you would say, like what? What do you mean it could hurt the patient if the dose is too high? 
Well, two severe adverse effects that can happen are ototoxicity. Yes, you need to know that. It means toxic to the ears. And the patient might start with tinnitus or tinnitus ringing in the ears. And if you don't catch that, then it can progress to permanent deafness. So ask the client about ringing in the ears when he's on these antibiotics. Uh, and if so, stop the infusion and notify the RN and the provider uh, because we've got to get them off of it or lower the dose or something. We'll let, call the doctor, S bar that, call the doctor. Another severe adverse effect is nephrotoxicity, toxic to the kidneys, which could lead to renal failure and the need for dialysis. So watch for decreasing urine output less than 30 milliliters an hour. And if so, stop the infusion, notify the RN, S bar the provider and see what he wants to do. Now, they are potent and we'll learn more about them. And they're not every antibiotic is this, but I will, let me show you right now some of, well, we'll see it on the next page. Some that are very, very strong. But since they are strong and they're for life-threatening infections and they can hurt you if the dose is too high, then how are we going to try to prevent that? Well, we are going to give you a dose based on your weight. Example, three milligrams per kilogram per day IV. Um, hang on a minute. Let me make a note. Three milligrams per kilogram. Okay, so that's one of the things, and we'll play around with that today as well uh, in this uh, PowerPoint lecture, but we'll have to weigh you because not everybody's going to get the same dose because if someone weighs 200 pounds versus someone weighs 120 pounds, they would obviously be on different doses of these strong antibiotics. Then another way to tell if the dose is too high is we'll draw your blood draw blood work to determine if you have the correct amount of medicine in your bloodstream. We'll talk about that. So what I want you to know right here, right now on this slide is that some antibiotics are very potent. They're very strong. They're used for the hard to treat infections or the ones that could kill you. And they are so strong that they could hurt the client. How? Hurt your ears where you could start with tinnitus. It could go to ringing in the ears. that could go to deafness or nephrotoxicity hurt your kidneys, which would mean that your urine output would decline and you would need dialysis. So to prevent the toxic effects, we will weigh you and give you a dose based on your weight, and we will draw blood work to determine if you've got too much in your system. More on all of that later, okay? Now, here are examples of two potent IV antibiotics, gentamicin and vancomycin. And if you were to look them up, and they're not the only ones, but they're two that I commonly think of. And if you were to look them up in the drug handbook under side effects, adverse effects, it would say they are both nephrotoxic and ototoxic. Now, these are prescribed for difficult to treat infections or those infections that are potentially life-threatening when other antibiotics are ineffective. And they're so potent, they're often prescribed based on the client's weight. Example, one, two milligrams per kilogram every eight hours, something like that. So I want you to think gentamicin and vancomycin or gent and vanc, as nurses will call it. Uh, are very strong and they could, they could hurt you. So we're going to weigh you, figure out your dose. Um, all right, this is our last slide here. Let's look at this CNS result. It came back. Okay, uh, let's take a look at it. Let's see. We collected a specimen of the wound on your right hip and we did it on November 1st. Okay, and they cultured it. Now, remember, they're going to look at this in the lab at 24 hours, 48 hours, and 72 hours because they're going to let that germ 
feed off of the agar in that container and it's going to be in an incubator. So here's what it says. 24 hours later on November the 2nd, it says no growth, which means they didn't see anything growing yet. We're not done yet. So at 24 hours, we didn't see anything growing, but we're not done. We'll put it back in the incubator and let it continue to eat and stay warm. So at 48 hours, look what happened on day two. Gram negative rods. So see, I told you, you have to know what these things mean. Gram negative means they stained it with the gram stain, the purple stain, but they turned, they did not stay purple. They turned pink or red and they are rods. So that meant they were reddish or pink under the microscope and they look like this. Okay. Then, so we found something at 48 hours, put it back in and go again because we're not done. And in 72 hours, right here, let's see what else it says. Gram-positive caca. Ooh. So now they did a gram stain, and it stayed purple, and the bacteria are circular. Ooh. So, yeah, it, 24 hours, we didn't find anything, but 48 and 72 hours, gone by we have found two germs in your left hip wound two and they gave them a name so let's take a look at it they gave organism number one proteus mirabilis that's the name of it and organism number two mrsa methicillin resistant staphylococcus rs mrsa all right now, if you look here, organism number one is Proteus mirabilis. Organism number two is MRSA. And if you look down here at all these antibiotics that they tested, look how easy it is for Proteus mirabilis to be treated. Look how easy it is to treat that. So many antibiotics will work against it because of the S. There's only one up here that they tested that didn't work. MRSA, because it's methicillin resistant, Staphylococcus aureus, is a little bit more challenging to treat because it's resistant to many more antibiotics. Look at all of these things that it's resistant to. Now, it's sensitive to some things, but this we would have to call the doctor and read this results to him because see, it says, look here. The lab results phone to the nurse, and they're going to tell you, list your name and title. They called you with this, and they sent it to you. So you're going to have to know what this means, okay? And I bet you anything, this patient is going to have to be on um, two different antibiotics. And I know one of them is going to be very strong because MRSA is very difficult to treat and he's probably going to be on vancomycin. Um, but he could be on gentamicin as well because it's sensitive. Um, but two different antibiotics, okay, to kill both the different germs, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. And I think that concludes part four of our lecture. So uh, see you shortly for part five. Thank you.